What is it like to survive for a hundred days in RimWorld as the United States of America? Grab your pet bald eagle, follow me, and let's find out. We start off our colony with five colonists, one of which is the President of the United States, equipped with a minigun arm and bionic limbs. We start with quite a few resources, including a UNSC pelican and a bison that I promptly named after George Washington himself. The only thing more American than a bison named after George Washington would be us building the White House to live in. And naturally, it's not actually white because it's being made out of the wood in the game, but our colonists enjoyed the first night sleeping in their bedroom, as did the president in his very own room. He looks nice and cozy for someone that's technically sleeping in a walled-off forest. The next day, we began powering up the White House with some solar panels so we could see everything, but in a familiar event, one of our colonists went into a fire-starting spree, trying to light the White House on fire. Boy, does that seem familiar. We quickly put out those fires, though, and began building everyone some nice little homes to stay in. We also began hunting some local wildlife. We started with some donkeys. Now, this is nothing political uh, at all. It just happened to be a donkey, not an elephant. Don't take it personally. And shortly after that, we promptly gave our faction and colony a suitable name. The president then began constructing a taxidermy bench so we could do what us Americans do best, kill some innocent animals in the woods and then mount their heads on a slab of wood to decorate our homes. Just after that, we had a boomalope self-tame, and we had a large trade caravan from France to come and visit with us and trade with us, but they had nothing of interest, so I just kind of let them go on their way. Then we had a filthy red coat enter the area, no doubt carrying tea with him, so we promptly murdered him out in the forest. And look at that, just as I suspected, tea. The president then began constructing a massive prison to house all the people we would soon recruit just before he ended up catching the plague. I believe he was also our best doctor as well, so he self-tended himself, and then shortly thereafter ended up developing immunity to it. Just after that, the president and our colonist Sarah took a uh, liking to each other and then became lovers. So of course I built them a nice little double bed to snuggle up in at night. Some time passed and we began loading up the pelican. We were going on a journey to bring freedom to a local tribe. And by freedom I mean that we were going to send our people down there to murder most of them and then take any goods that they had. But that's how it goes. It was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We were highly outnumbered, but our technology was far superior. So it was kind of an even fight. Besides, I'm pretty sure these tribes people were a bunch of filthy commies anyhow. Not long after we finished setting up our defenses, the tribes people began attacking us. Lucky for us though, we had five people with mini guns and machine guns, and we also had four machine gun turrets. The tribes people fought valiantly, and they even managed to take out most of our turrets, if not all of our turrets, and injure quite a few of us. In the end, though, we did end up defeating them and destroying the base. Then we had to task ourselves with healing some of them just enough so that we could kidnap them and recruit them. After returning home, we noticed the president was sick with the flu. Then, when our backs were turned, the prisoners attempted to break out. But that was okay because we used the power of democracy to make them behave and go back to their cells peacefully. Not long after that, we had a gentleman fall from the sky who was injured who claimed to be the president's brother. I don't know how true that was, but we decided to imprison him and forcefully recruit him just as we had with the other prisoners. Unfortunately, though, the president's situation worsened and the flu began to defeat him. After some time, he ended up passing away. In anticipation of this event, I had already built a beautiful crypt with a sarcophagus to house his corpse. We began the funeral for the president and everyone gave some kind words about bald eagles and democracy, but the funeral still ended up being terrible. After the president's funeral, we had another filthy red coat enter the area. I pondered on killing the man, but I decided maybe we should give him a chance and forcefully recruit him into our ranks. 
He also had some wonderful weapons and other items on him as well. Not long after that, we recruited our first tribes person that we had kidnapped. I ended up sending one of our colonists to check out an ancient danger, hoping that there would be some good items in there, and I was not let down by that. There was a very interesting sword that could be bonded with. And just after that, I ended up electing Sarah, who was the president's lover, into our new president. It only seemed fair she'd take the reins after the old man kicked the bucket. The president's brother, heartbroken, ended up going into a murderous rage, so we all came together to kick him until he hit the ground. We had a bunch of man-hunting squirrels come after us in our area, so we all gathered in a group and splattered them all on the ground with our rifles. After we were finished murdering all the squirrels in the area, I decided we'd go back to the ancient danger and attempt to attack one of the cryosleep caskets to see who or what was inside. After shooting one, I was very glad I'd built a hallway full of traps. Then I realized our hallway full of wooden traps wouldn't do anything against these people and they were all coming after us. After picking them off one by one, we were then being raided by a fair-sized group of filthy commies. The filthy commies were coming at us with axes, short bows, and socialized healthcare. It was the most disturbing thing I had ever seen in my life. So naturally, they were all met with hell and bullets and fire and, you know, other things that kill people. Then I seen the president and vice president sitting at a chess table traumatized by the event. Then we had another prison break. So naturally, we just showed them the United States Constitution to rationally explain our point as to why they should go back into their cell and behave. God bless America. While most of our colonists were recovering from malaria, we had another group of commies coming to take our guns, and I couldn't let that happen. So naturally, after they approached the colony, we gave them an up-close and personal look at our right to bear arms. After those filthy socialists fled our colony, we ended up giving our president that awesome sword that we found in the ancient danger. It would kind of be like her signature weapon, if you will. After time had passed, I went over to our collection of animals that we had been growing for quite a while and started giving them some appropriate presidential names. Please, can someone tell me what is more patriotic than a muffalo named after a president? Go on, I'll wait. Just after that, though, we ended up getting a distress call from someone who was being held prisoner by a local British faction. And since we don't negotiate with terrorists, baby, we decide to load up the Pelican and some of our men, fly down there, kick some ass, and then save the prisoner. There were only two British soldiers down there, they had quite a few gun turrets though. And as soon as we arrived, they began firing off mortar shells at us. The mortar shells did not deter us though. We got close and personal with them, murdering them, and then, after some time, we ended up blowing most of their gun turrets up as well. And, of course, we kicked in the door to the prison cell and rescued the prisoner. Just after returning home, though, we found ourselves matched with the pissed-off British that were falling from transport pods scattered all around the territory, some even in our animal pen. But we would make them wish that they stayed in those transport pods, drinking their filthy little tea, the devil's nectar, if you will. Because as soon as they cracked open those pods, we rained down hellfire on them. Since most of the British soldiers were scattered around the area, we ended up ganging up on them around about 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 and then murdering them. Our colonist Clark found one of the British officers inside our animal pen bleeding to death. He picked up the officer's sword and began to stab him until he died. Then around about day 80 or so, I realized we should focus on homeland security and just start working on a lot of defenses to make sure that we would be safe. We built several gun turrets in this time and also several areas where we could hide behind embrasures and shoot from. And as if to prove my worries true, we were once again being raided by a bunch of tribes people. During the battle, I seen one of the most American things I've ever seen in my life. Everyone was fighting for their lives, and then two people got in a fist fight over something totally useless. 
The tribe's people were pretty sneaky in their attacks. Some of them attacked us head on while the other larger group went around the side and attempted to flank us from the rear. But I don't like getting flanked from the rear. After defeating this raid of tribes people, somebody threw a party in the barracks to celebrate our victory and our nation's growth in this land over the commies and the filthy British tea drinkers. Everyone seemed to have a good time. Just after the party though, we were being attacked again by a local tribe. This time, a much smaller and weaker group, so it wasn't very hard to dispatch them very quickly. Their ranks barely held together as our machine gun turrets and our colonists rained down bullets upon them. This raid was so weak, our colonists were daydreaming of cheeseburgers and bacon and other American things. After we saw victory in that battle though, we had a French war merchant come by with some very useful weapons and armor. We bought a recon helmet and an anti-material rifle. These weapons and armor would come in handy for what we had planned in the future. And hopefully, with any luck, so would the French. We even allowed them to sit at our dining table in the White House and eat their meals, rest themselves, before ultimately they got back to their journey home. The French left us that night not knowing that in the future I would be calling for their aid. On day 100, the revolution had truly began. We came up to a field of tea plants and began setting fire to them with our Molotov cocktails. This surely would rustle the feathers of old King George and get him to come off his throne or at least send a bunch of his men to die at our hands. And it would appear that he was going with the latter. We had a massive, massive group of British soldiers that had came to attack our colony. Those soldiers waited in the icy cold not knowing what they were about to walk into. They began their assault on the colony, and we began firing at them. One of our colonists ran to the comms console to try and call for the French to come and aid us in battle. Little did I know that the French and the British were allies in this, though. Oops. The French arrived, but they didn't actually attack the British as far as I know, so it was really all up to us and our gun turrets at this point. Tragedy struck during battle. Clark was killed in action. So, I had one of the other colonists grab his rifle. This would not go in vain, we would continue to fight on. We had to continue fighting on because the British were already raining down hellfire on us, and since the French weren't going to help, it was either fight or die at this point. But that was just alright with us because these colors don't run, baby. I mean, we might run around the colony and, you know, try to defend ourselves, but uh, we wouldn't run away. Luckily though, we kind of stuck to a group and we were able to survive for the most part. The president, Sarah, went out though with her sword and just began murdering every red coat that she could find. But I would expect nothing less from the first female president of the United States of America. She was one baddie. It was a very chaotic night for our colonists to say the least. The British were still coming at us as hard as they could. But eventually, after a while of fighting, we ended up finally making them flee, and without really any casualties at this time. But of course, we wouldn't just let them run away freely after they'd done this to us, so we chased most of them down and tried to murder them. Sarah, on her own, even chased down several of them and shot them and or stabbed them with her really badass sword. So all I'm going to say to that is hashtag Sarah for Prez 2024, baby. She's really got the brains and the brawn. Unfortunately, though, our vice president, Kyra, was laying out in the rice field, bleeding to death, and we were unable to save her before she eventually died. But the vice president and our soldier Clark's deaths would not go in vain, as there would now no longer be taxation without representation. And this, my children, is the story of the American Revolution. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, no, for real, though. I've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, happy Independence Day to everybody celebrating Independence Day. If you do not live in the United States, um, happy just July 4th to you. And I hope you enjoyed the video as well. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this. I apologize if it seems a little lower quality. Um, it uh, was kind of rushed. It was a last minute idea <laughs> that I had. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.